In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use the syntax of the Markdown language. Markdown is very popular, uh, especially on sites such as GitHub and different spots that have usually README files or things like that. It's a very easy to learn syntax. If you know how to use Microsoft Word, you can do a pretty, <laughs> a pretty good a markdown document and that's what we're going to do in this episode and then we're going to put on Heroku so that we can actually uh, or we're going to put on GitHub so we can actually see it. Uh, this is what Ruby on Rails gives us kind of by default and this looks okay. Uh, I'll switch back and this is what it looks like right here. We have uh, the readme, we have you know some bullet points and things like that uh, but Markdown actually gives us a lot of flexibility. We can do things. We can even add images and uh, put not only links inside, we can create block quotes and uh, build in ways that you can show what code actually looks like and so you can designate that separately. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this episode. We're going to create a readme that's specifically for our application. So I'm going to just delete all this code and also come here and right click on readme and rename it and instead of .rdoc just do dot MD and that stands for Markdown language and you'll see if you're using Nitrous uh, you'll see that it switches to this Markdown syntax and it's gonna do some very nice syntax highlighting for us so uh, let's get started the first thing is we're gonna give it the title which is Enterprise Ape and to give something a headline title just go on the next line and then oh, not pluses uh, then just type equals all the way down as essentially like an underline and that's going to make that a, a, a headline title. Give it a couple spaces and then we want to say powerful software. This is not going to be a very well written readme. This is more just showing what you can do with the markdown syntax. So under that this is a secondary heading and uh, you just put the dash signs below that, and then in a third heading, which if you're similar, if you're familiar with HTML, this would be like an H3. Uh, give it three hash sy hash symbols or three pound signs, and we want to say welcome to the repository. And now we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to add a link. So say feel free to access and we're going to say what the name of the link is going to be and we want to say my portfolio and then right after that in the brackets and enter parentheses and and give it whatever URL you want to give it so I'll actually give it our portfolio site and in that off and create a new line and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a block quote and what that's going to do is it's going to kind of segment this text as being different it's also going to give us the ability to nest a headline within that block quote so just do two pound signs and honestly I've kind of forgotten of what type of things I'd want to type in. So I'm going to come to this site and this is a really good one to know as you're prototyping. It's called Lorem Ipsum and this is all Latin context. And what you can do is just copy and paste pretty much anything and there's our headline. And now want to create a space in the block quote and then do another one. And on this one I'm just going to make it plain just some plain content, just a sentence in there. Actually, let me give it, let me give us a paragraph in there. So, just a couple sentences. Okay, and we'll do another space. And now I want to show you how you can use uh, bold, and uh, you can create some different emphasis this this way. So we're just going to pick one sentence, and we're going to make the last word bold and the way you do that is you just go with where you want it to start do the star key and then go to where it ends 
do another star key and it's as easy as that. Now say that we wanted to give it even more emphasis, we'll get out of this block quote, do the same sentence, and instead we'll just give it two stars. And we'll see the difference there shortly. And now if you want to do bullet points or anything like that, uh, well first we'll give it a level three headline and say crazy good software. And then bullet points can actually be uh, created using three different keys. You can either do a star, and you could say rapid development. You can use a plus sign, and tested. And you can also do a minus sign, and say 24-7 support. So it's kind of funny, but all three of these actually are going to look like the exact same thing when they uh, get displayed uh, using HTML. So uh, you can use whatever one you prefer. They're all going to look identical at the end of the day. Uh, now, also, if you want to create numbers, uh, it's pretty basic. You just put numbers in, Markdown automatically knows what you're looking to do. So we'll do something like reasons to choose us, and we'll go one price to precision, three performance. Okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is show you how to actually uh, integrate code into it, or at least not functional code, but you can make it look like there's code inside. So this is very helpful if for some, you know, you're creating a application and deploying it to GitHub and you want other people to know how to, yeah, integrate some environment variable, or you want to show, okay, this is what the code is supposed to look like, something like that. Uh, this is a really nice way of doing it, and the, uh, the way you do it is say something like, this is what Ruby code would look like, and then the way you do it is on the very top left-hand side of your keyboard, right under the escape, uh, there's this little tick sign, and so you just give it one tick, and say whatever code you want. So we say puts hello world and then do another little tick and that's it. So this is, uh, we just went through a lot of stuff right here. You can see it's all highlighted uh, in nitrous which makes it nice. To review we have h1 headline, h2 headline, uh, we have a h3 we have a link, a block quote with a nested headline. Uh, we have some emphasis, two different types of emphasis tags. We have some more headlines and bullet points, numbers, and then we have some, uh, some code embedded inside the, uh, uh, the actual page. So let's save this, push it up to Git, and let's see how much different it looks. So we'll just go get status and it changed those items. And we'll go get add, get commit, and say updated the read me to include MD syntax. And then we'll go get push. Type in username, password, there we go, let's see what this looks like. Hit, go to your GitHub repository where this is stored at, and just hit refresh. Come down, and there we go. So you actually have all of the stuff we did right here gets translated and looks like this, which is pretty cool. So you can see some of the other things it does. So say this uh, H1 tag, this main headline, you see they put a nice little bar right below it to separate the content. And it does the same thing on a few of these other headlines, the H1, the H2, and then the embedded headline inside the block quote. You can see our link, that works perfectly. And then uh, right here you can see the emphasis. Uh, this, in the first emphasis, when we just gave it the one star on each side, it italicized it. When it uh, created the bold, we put two stars on each side, so you can see the difference. Then we had some more H3s. 
And if you remember our bullet points where I told you they were gonna look identical, you can see right here, there's no difference at all, even though those are actually all three different characters or symbols that represent the bullet point. The numbers look good and they're slightly indented. And then last but not least, here is our code. And you can see there's it looks different than the rest of the site. So it's a good way of signifying when you're trying to say this is what code is and you know this is regular content. So if you followed along, great job. You now know pretty much all there is to know about the uh, the markdown syntax. It's very easy to use, it's very popular, and it's smart to be able to integrate that into your projects. They'll make your code repositories look a lot more professional, and they'll uh, let you clearly uh, define and describe exactly what you're wanting to do in your repository. So I'll see you in the next video.